right, working on a new chapter. We are going to show today how to model factors. You should know what a factor is. So let's read at the top there where it's talking about it. A factor is a number multiplied by another number to find a product. Every whole number greater than one has at least two factors, that number and one. Take a look at their examples. They have 1 times 18 equals 18. So the factors would be 1 and 18. Does everybody see that? Now you're always going to have 1 in itself. So if you're multiplying 18, you're going to have 18 and 1. Because that's always going to work. The same way with 7 and 1. What are my factors? It's 7 times 1 equals 7. Get it in? 7 and 1. Now when you say them, we're probably going to list them in order from the least to the greatest. So we would say 1 and 7. Does that make sense? Okay. Then if I look over here farther, I have 1 times 342 equals 342. So Chase, what are my factors there? And if I want it listed least to greatest, I would say which one least? <coughs> am I going to say 342 first or am I going to say 1 first if I want it in least to greatest? So always say 1 first when you're naming them because most of the time they're going to put them in order. Everybody understand that? Now, many numbers can be broken into factors in different ways. I want you to look at the 16s here. We can take 1 times 16 to get 16, but we can also take 4 times 4 to get 16. And we can also take 2 times 8 to get 16. So if I was listing them in order from least to greatest, I would say 1, 2, 4, and 8. Notice I did not say the 4 twice, because once you use it, you're using that. Now, am I also going to use 16? Yeah. So it's going to be 1, 2, 4, 8, and the 16. So even though 16 is your product of this, you're still using it as a factor when you're multiplying by 1. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So we're going to try some out here. We're going to model and record factors for 24. So hopefully your brain is thinking here about what kind of numbers can I use as factors to get me 24. Four. Okay, so we're going to use all these tiles in here, and we're going to use 24 of them to make as many different arrays as we possibly can, and we're going to record them in the grid and write the factors that are modeled. So take a look over here at what they did already. We're going to use this first one as a guide. So take a look at your array that you made. What are you seeing here? Who can tell me what my array says? Kenzie? Erasing. And it's right there. So if you were looking up here, you can see she has two going down, and how many are going across? Twelve. Does that give you a total of 24 tiles? So what are the two factors that are being used here? Two and twelve. So you're using two and twelve. Those are two of the factors. Now, we are not going to use two and twelve again. We're going to use different factors that are going to give us 24. So think to yourself about your multiplication facts, and what other factors could I use for that summaries? So 6 times 4. So we're going to come down, and we're and it doesn't matter where you do it, but we need to leave room because we're going to do more than one. You're going to do 6 and 4. I'm just going to start over here on the edge because it's easiest. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. She said to do 6 and 4, so I'm going to go over to 4. And then I'm going to complete the array. So it looks something like that. Okay. Now, down here, we're going to use that down here so we can find our factors. So what did we use here, Del Maurice? Six times four. So that means our factors are, <coughs> let's use four and six, though, so that they're in order of least to greatest. Okay. All right, what other ones? Look at what else would work. Three and eight. So three times eight. eight. So I'm going to come over here a little ways, and I'm going to do three down. And I'm going to go over eight. And I'm going to come down and make the array complete. Your tiles 
So that means we're taking three times eight. And what are my factors, class? Three and eight. Good. Three and eight. Now, you might be thinking, well, I could switch all these around and use it also, right? Like, I could switch it and go 4 and 6 and 8 and 3, right? But have we already used those factors? Okay, so we don't want to flip them around. What's the one that we are forgetting, Brayden? We already did that. They did that one for us. So we don't want to use it again. Cheyenne, what are we missing? All right, so we're forgetting that easy one. And typically, that's what we forget is the 1 and 24. So we're going to do one row of 24. Please make sure you're not running into another array. Give yourself plenty of room. So our factors are 1 times 24, so that gives us the factors of 1 and 24. So as I talked to you earlier, when we list our factors, we're always going to list them in order from least to greatest unless it tells us differently. Okay, so let's look at all of the ones. Now guys, we can't forget about this one up here. And it's up here and not down here. So don't forget about them. So what am I going to list first? One. one and then two, two three, three, four, six, six, eight. 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 Uh-oh, what do we miss? Twelve. And then 24. So we want to make sure we put them in order. So as I list them, if I look at the factors of 24, I have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. Now, something we didn't talk about, but it says it down here. Two factors that make a product are sometimes called a factor pair. That would be like 4 and 6. It would be a factor pair. Because they would make 24. 3 and 8 would be a factor pair. Okay? 1 and 24 would be a factor pair. So it's asking us how many factor pairs does 24 have? How many different pairs of factors did we come up with? Four of them. So we're going to say four pairs. I can't write it down the bottom very well, so bear with me. And then you're going to list them. You're going to have one and 24. And I'm writing these in order also. Two and 12. Three and eight. And four and six. Now, before you change the page, I covered up the math talk, but it says, can you arrange the tiles in each array another way and show the same factors? We talked about that, right? Yeah. So what it's asking is, can I flip six and four around and make it four and six? Could I do that? Yeah. Yeah. But once you use them, you don't need to do all of the other ways also. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot more work to do. Okay. All it's doing is listing all of them. We have four pairs. And so then we listed them. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. So you're looking at the factor pairs here when we're listing it down here. This is the, what we call factor pairs, everything that I circled. Does everybody understand that that's what it's called? Because it's probably going to use those kinds of words with you in the next coming pages. Once you have that written, flip the page, please. Alright, now we're going to see if you were paying attention. Number one says use the arrays to name the factors of 12. Each one of them has 12 tiles. You're going to find me the factors. Now, if you remember on the Show What You Know page, I asked that you put the rows listed first and then the columns. Rows go down, columns go across. So make sure you're listing it that way. Then you're going to list the factors of 12 out in order from least to greatest. Yes? All right, so with your partner, I want you to 
to work on number one, and then we'll have somebody tell us what we did. All right, who wants to tell me what we did here on number one? Elena, what would you do for this first one? So one tile times 12 tiles to give you a total of 12. What do we do on the next one? Ian? Four and three. Do we agree? Okay, and then the last one, Morgan? Two and six. So that means we have one times 12, four times three, and two times six, but we're going to list them in order. So we have one, read with me. Then two, we're putting them in order. Three is listed. Four, six is listed, and 12. So just because you took 1 and 12 does not mean you write down down there 1 and 12. What did I say we need to list them in? Least to greatest. Okay, so you might have found them in 1 and 12, in 4 and 3, in 2 and 6, but that's not how we're going to list them at the bottom. Okay, all right, on number two, it says to use tiles to find all of the factors of the product. Then record the arrays and write the factors shown. So you're going to write the factors on the line, but you're going to show me how to make the arrays just like over here. Are you with me? All right, so you're going to do all of them for number two. Do just number two first. All right, Raiden, can you tell me what you guys decided to draw over there for number two? Okay, so one down and five over. It doesn't really matter where you do this at. You've got a big grid box and you're only going to make this, right? Are there any other ways to do this? No. No, so what am I writing here? Do I write five first? I have to write one with a comma and a five. Those will be my factors that I have for number two. So sometimes you're not going to have to draw very many arrays because there's only one way to do that. I want you now to work on number three. Remember, we want all of the ways that are possible. When you looked at number three, were you able to do just one this time like you did on number two? No. No, because there's going to be more factors over 20. You can tell me what they use. Mackenzie? So four times five. Do we agree with that one? Yes. Now, as I was talking to some of you, if you write your four and your five, this will be easier when you're listing your factors, because some of you forget what you did and you have to recount. So just list them like this. We've labeled arrays like this before, right? Okay, what's another way? Great, right, what'd you do? Say it again. Okay, so one in 20. I know if I got 20. So one here and 20 here. Just a label. Okay, 20. All right, anything else? Elena? Two times 10, she says. So two and 10. So if you're missing one, you need to make sure you're getting it. So again, you can label two and 10. It's not the only three ways. Nothing else that I can do, right? So then I'm going to list them. What am I putting first? One, one, comma, two, four, five, ten, twenty. Good. That's twenty. We always have to get in there, even though that's the number we're looking at. That's still the number we've got to put for a factor because it is still a factor of it. Okay. All right. Number four. Your last one here on this page. You're doing twenty-five. All right. Who can tell me a way they got for twenty-five? Justin, what did you do? Okay, five times five. Five down, five across, correct? Okay, what else did we do? Morgan? One and 25, and I believe if you go all the way across, it's going to be a total of 25. So could you have done 25 and one? Is there 25 going down this way? So could you have done that? No, so again, I can label these just to help me out. So this would be 1 and 25. Are there any other ways? So what am I listing for my factors? 1, 5, Do I have to list 5 twice? No. No, just list it once. So even though you're using...